It comes from Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all of his possessions. <coughs> and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of the slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seized him by the throat, saying, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and he went and he threw him into prison until the other slave could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went out and reported to their Lord what had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, as we open your word, and as your word talks to us in ways that we are often uncomfortable with, help us to hear your word today. Not only hearing your word, but taking it to heart. May we, God, choose to hear and obey what you tell us today. May our hearts be changed. May our lives reflect the change you've created in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Last week we talked about the way we want the law. <coughs> we might not think we do. We think we sometimes are really grateful we don't have the law, but we pointed out how the law for us is something that's of comfort. It gives us some pretty serious guidelines of what we can and can't do. We like the way things can be laid out in the law how our actions can be prescribed and how we can follow that prescription and have something to guide and judge us by. Then we looked at the ways in which Jesus came and made things so much more difficult for us. No longer living by the very letter of the law, Jesus gave us something much more difficult when he said that we are to obey not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. Jesus called us to not only be obedient, but to love, to love God and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. This week we're looking at how Jesus encountered that love of the letter of the law once again. As a, a man comes to him and asks, Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Is seven times enough? Did I do good enough if I do that? And after seven times, can I let it go and not forgive him anymore? I can almost hear Jesus groaning at this point. Oh, will you not learn? And Jesus answers him saying, You've missed the point yet again. <clears throat> Jesus then goes into a parable to drive home his point. In the story he talks about a Lord, somebody high up, somebody wealthy. And he talks about this the servant who owed him money. The Bible says that he owed him um, 
10,000 talents. To put that in perspective, that's 15 years of wages for a day laborer. 15 years of money paying somebody back every dime they make as they work in the fields or do some other kind of labor. This man owed his Lord 15 years worth of income. And there was no way he could pay him back. So the Lord knows that. He says, well, put him and his family and his children, his wife, his whole family, and everything they own, take it all, and put the family in debtor's prison until he could pay it back. The man falls on his knees and asks for forgiveness, realizing that what he owes is far greater than what he could ever repay. He's in over his head. The Lord takes pity upon him and forgives the debt. You would think that would change a man. You would think that anybody who goes through such an ordeal would be so grateful. And yet this man leaves, and upon seeing somebody who owes him only a hundred denarii, which is usually a day's uh, wages of a laborer, grabs the man by the throat and says, pay me now. And when the man falls on his knees and begs for mercy, the first slave refuses to give it, takes him and puts that man in debtor's prison until he could pay that small, piddly little amount of money. But that man wasn't changed by the grace that was given to him. And when the Lord found out about what had happened, he took that first slave and he did throw him in prison, taking all of his possessions until he could pay back all that he owed. Forgiveness for us is so very difficult. This man found out how hard it was. He couldn't forgive a small debt, even though he himself had been forgiven of something so much greater. Forgiveness was so hard for him, and yet he was called to forgive. He found out what happens when you don't forgive. There's a reason we need to be aware of this reality. There's a reason we need to be aware of just how hard it is for us to be able to forgive. And that's because forgiveness, for the most of us, isn't our first instinct. Most of us aren't geared and made to go and want to forgive other people. By asking the question, how many times, Jesus, must I forgive? The asker was seeking to know the limit of just how far they needed to go. How much did God expect of them? Remember, the law gives pretty good boundaries. The law tells you just how far you can go. And this man wanted to know where those boundaries are, where the guide rails are, and where the end of the road is, where I don't have to go any further. Interestingly, if you think about this, if we keep count of how many times we've forgiven somebody so that we might know when we have done enough, we've forgiven enough, when we've done that, the reality is, is that we never truly forgave anybody anything. We're merely biding our time. We're counting the number of times we've been wrong and have let something go. But that's not forgiveness. We're keeping track. We're holding that in. We're not letting it go. Our instincts tell us to hold grudges and to hold on to our anger. And what we're called to is something beyond that. We're called to changing our hearts. Not merely saying, I forgive you, but to, in our hearts, to forgive and to let go and to forget that pain. But we want to hold on to that anger. We want to hold on to that hurt and to that pain, and we have to learn how to let it go. It's not that we go around looking for reasons to be angry. The problem is, is that it's not our nature to let hurt go. We need to hear that about ourselves. We need to know that in order to be able to do what Christ has called us to do. I would love to say that all we have to do is just learn to get along, that, that Jesus is just calling us to be better. I would love to say this is just something that God calls important, but it goes beyond that. It goes deeper than that. It's certainly a lot more complicated. 
there is a call to be better, but there is a problem. The problem is, is that we must forgive that we too might be forgiven. That somehow our forgiveness is hinged upon our ability to forgive other people. And I understand the theological wranglings that this causes for a lot of us. It causes me to be tied in knots, that my forgiveness is somehow tied to how other people forgive me. Scriptures paint a picture that I cannot ignore. True, Jesus does forgive us all, and we only have to accept that forgiveness. There's nothing that I can do to earn my forgiveness. I have to accept that forgiveness that's been given to me, but yet somehow my forgiveness is tied to my ability to forgive other people. That's a bit of a conundrum today. Today's passage is a clear example that anytime we fail to forgive, that failure will come back to haunt us. This slave does not forgive. He, though he was forgiven, does not forgive a smaller debt. And that came back to haunt him. And Jesus used that parable, and in verse 35 he tells us, So my heavenly Father will do to any of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. It's not merely good enough that we accept the forgiveness that Christ gave us, but we're to take that forgiveness and we're to be able to offer it to other people, as if somehow our forgiveness is hinged upon that, that if we don't forgive, then we can't be forgiven. And like I said, this has me in theological knots, but yet the, the, the scriptures are very clear about this. Matthew 6, 14 through 15 tells us, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Jesus has been very clear that our being forgiven requires that we also forgive other people, that if we don't forgive other people, that our forgiveness is in jeopardy. We can't earn our forgiveness, but yet we can jeopardize it. It's not a simple, just, it's not simple enough to say we need to forgive other people. There's a lot on the line. Even in the Lord's Prayer, which we just prayed, we have the part in there where we say, Forgive us our debts, Lord, as we forgive those, as we forgive our debtors those who have done us wrong. Forgive us our debts. We recognize that God, that we are asking God to forgive us in the same way that we forgive other people. In reality, this isn't what we really want. We don't really want God to forgive us as we forgive other people. What we really want is God to forgive us far better than we forgive other people. But we're constantly called to and reminded of our obligation to forgive other people. <coughs> we are called to. We are expected to forgive. It is a demand. And in reality, we have been get forgiven of things that are far worse than what others have done to us. Our debt is far greater than the individual debts that everybody else has against us. And if our debt was forgiven, we're required to let go of those smaller debts. This is a demand that God gives us. And yet, oddly enough, this might not be the most difficult demand of us. As hard as it seems to think that, that this, this call and this demand to forgive other people is difficult, that it's hard to believe there could be something more difficult. I dare say there is something harder than forgiving other people. Last week we talked about how we're called to love our neighbor as ourselves. We furthered we further this discussion today by being called to forgive others as we have been forgiven but last week, we were called to love our neighbors as ourselves. I've always had an issue with this. And the issue is that there are some people who love others as, who do love others as they love themselves, and they treat their neighbors terribly. And the reason for that is they do not love themselves. 
Christ calls us to love others as we love ourselves, and those people that don't treat others well often don't treat themselves well. <laughs> They're actually obeying what Jesus told them. Sadly, that's not what Jesus had in mind. Many people do not love themselves. They are filled with self-loathing. They hate who they are, and they hate what they do. And since they cannot love themselves, they cannot love others. Jesus, though, went a little bit further. When he was alone with his disciples, we read in John 13, 34, he says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. So you should love one another. Jesus went beyond the love others as you love yourselves, and he says, love others as I have loved you. Well, that again further complicates things. Again, this call is so much harder than what had come before. But now we run back into the problem of obeying the letter of the law, not the spirit of the law. We all have people that will try to love other people, but how does a person filled with self-loathing and anger to themselves obey such a commandment outside of just devotion to obedience? If somebody hates themselves, can they truly be obedient and love others? There's something very difficult in this. There's something that is not possible for them. But there is hope. When we were called to forgive others just as we are forgiven, there's often one person that's overlooked, one person that we fail to forgive. In our lives, we'll always find there's one person that we had a hard time forgiving, and that person is ourselves. For many of us, it is far easier for us to forgive everybody else around us of everything that they've done, and it's far harder for us to forgive ourselves. We hold ourselves to some higher standard, and when we fail to meet that standard, we don't forgive ourselves when we fail. We get angry. We hate who we are and what we've done, and we don't let it go. Christ calls us to forgive others as we have been forgiven. If God has seen fit to forgive you of your sins, then who are we to say, but you can't forgive me, my sins are so much greater, I am not worth forgiving. If God says, you are my beloved, then who are we to say, but I am so awful, I can't be forgiven. The person who is angry with themselves, the person who is filled with self-loathing, those are usually the people who find it so much more difficult to forgive themselves. They're filled with anger and self-loathing because they don't let their own sins go. And God is calling us to forgive. In order for us to truly be obedient, to step into forgiveness as we are called to, we have to be willing to forgive others and ourselves. And that moment when we can say, I forgive and I let go. I no longer count the number of sins. I no longer count the number of times I've had to forgive. I no longer remember what others have done. And I no longer remember my own faults, but forgive myself. Is the moment that we are able to move into being the people God's called us to be. To truly love not only God, but each other. To truly not only love God, but ourselves. For we can never truly love ourselves until we let go of our sins and our failures and forgive them. Oddly, we forget this when we hear this passage, when we hear God saying, forgive others. And if you don't, if you don't let go of what others have done, then I cannot let go of what you have done. We forget that we must also forgive ourselves. I pray this week that we will examine our lives, paying attention to that hurt, to that anger, to that frustrations that we have with ourselves and say, God, help me to forgive myself as you have forgiven me. Remembering that God did forgive you and let it all go, now God calls us to let it go too. It is so hard to let go of our of our. Uh, anger and our frustration is so hard for us to forgive but that like stewardship begins in our heart first 
to truly love somebody else, we have to love ourselves. And to truly forgive others, we have to forgive ourselves. The God who created us loved us so much that God was willing to forgive us. Are we more powerful or important or wiser than God? Well, since we're not, maybe we can listen to God. Knowing that God forgave us, we can forgive ourselves. Knowing that God forgave us, we can forgive one another and truly live as God has called us. Maybe just seeing the reality and knowing this truth will help us to obey that which is much more complicated than before. Maybe the spirit of the law can be followed. I pray that is true for all of us this week. To God be the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah. Let us pray. Gracious God, let your Spirit pour out upon us, illuminating our hearts and our minds to seeing where we hold on to failure, where we fail to forgive ourselves and others. May we this week be willing to forgive those around us. More importantly, may we be able to forgive ourselves, accepting the love that you gave and being so willing to share that with other people. Overcome us, God, with the joy of our forgiveness that we are willing to give it to others and ourselves. I pray in Jesus' name and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us now join together. Let us close with